So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about BRCA and why I chose to have my ovaries removed. So if you're not familiar with BRCA or if you've kind of heard about it a little bit but not exactly sure what it is, so uh, BRCA is actually a gene and when you have a BRCA gene mutation, what it means is something is wrong with that gene. So the BRCA gene is responsible for tumor suppression. So that means when you start to grow uh, a tumor or you start to have bad cells, normally, the, I think if I'm understanding this correctly, normally what happens is this BRCA gene kicks in and it fights the cancer, the bad cells, and gets rid of it. But if you have a mutation, it doesn't work correctly. So it's been found that when you have a BRCA gene mutation, whether it's BRCA1 or BRCA2, it puts you at an increased risk for getting certain cancers, including breast and ovarian cancer. Back in 2009, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was only 31 at the time, and we knew there was a family history, so I got the uh, BRCA gene test, and it turned out that I was BRCA1 positive. At that time, I chose just to have the bilateral mastectomy. I wasn't ready to have my ovaries removed yet. There are some risks with getting your ovaries out before menopause, before natural menopause. Uh, you can look that up, but you know, a decrease in bone health. There's some issues with, um, you know, emotional stability you go through. As so we looked at in the data, the doctors felt that it was okay to keep my ovaries until about the age of 40. So over the summer, I turned 40, and it was time to get my ovaries removed. Honestly, I was really not looking forward to the surgery. I was kind of dreading turning 40 because I knew the surgery was coming up. I had some complications with my last surgery when I had my fallopian tubes removed. You can go back and watch that video and uh, hear more about it. So anyway, I was just, I was just really nervous about this surgery. I had my oophorectomy, which is what they call uh, ovary removal surgery, MD Anderson, in September of 2018. It was a laparoscopic surgery, which means they just make small incisions. Uh, they don't have to make a really long incision like they used to have to do back, I don't know, however long ago. So for me, I just have three incisions. Now, keep in mind, my surgery was about four weeks ago, so I'm going to show you what my incisions look like this was four weeks ago. So my oophorectomy, the surgery to have my ovaries removed, was four weeks ago. Everybody is a little bit different, but for me what they did is they made three different incisions. They made one here, one here, and one through my belly button. This is pretty amazing considering it's only been four weeks since my surgery and you can hardly, you can hardly see anything. So my surgery was just an outpatient surgery. I had to go to Houston the day before for uh, pre-op appointments, but then I had the surgery the following day. We got there, I think it was around nine in the morning or so, I'll have to look back. But um, And then we were out of the hospital. We were going back to the hotel maybe around six o'clock at night. I think the surgery itself was around an hour or so. And, um, it wasn't too bad, obviously I was asleep. But I have to say, overall, this surgery was way better than I was expecting. Um, I did wake up a little bit groggy because they do put you in general anesthesia, but it was nothing like I went through in the last surgery. I was pretty sore. Uh, I did have some pain medication. They sent me home with uh, a high dose of prescription Tylenol and Advil and then a hydrocodone, which really I think I only ended up taking that maybe once or twice. I was mostly just taking the ibuprofen and the Tylenol to manage the pain. So we went back to the hotel that night after the surgery. Um, I was pretty sore, but I was able to ride in the car okay with the pillow and our hotel was just a few miles away. Uh, we went and got some dinner. Um, it was just Asian food with some soup. I think I got pho but I was able to hold that down okay. So that same night after having my oophorectomy, I was able to eat a very light meal, but I did eat. Uh, I was in a little bit of pain and I took, I think it was the ibuprofen that night and I was able to sleep all right, I guess. I was having a little bit of 
a little bit of trouble sleeping. I just think because of all of the different medication that they'd given me and all the different sedatives and then combined with the pain medicine. So I didn't really sleep all that well that first night, but it wasn't so much because of the pain. I just kind of felt like I was alert, but I was tired, if that kind of makes sense. And then the next morning following my surgery, we were able to drive back home to Austin. I was pretty sore <laughs> and I was taking pain medication, but just the Tylenol and the ibuprofen. And we even stopped to get brunch on the way out. And I did that. I was pretty sore, but I was able to walk. I walked slowly, but I was able to walk. We drove back the three hours or so to Austin. Now, I know a lot of people have questions about how long they're going to have to take off of work and how long they're going to have restrictions. I know I had all of those questions too, and it was really frustrating because they would kind of give me a window, but it just varies uh, person to person. So I can tell you for me, uh, I work part-time. You know, I have the blog, but I also work part-time. I'm a math teacher at a private school. So I took off a week of work. And I went back the following week. Uh, so the second week I did work, you know, light hours and I got a ride from a friend. Even though I wasn't taking the heavy pain medicine, I just felt better not driving and getting a ride from somebody. So I would say by that second week, uh, it depends what kind of job you have, but you might be able to, you know, sit at a desk job or something like that. Now, if you're up and about and standing and doing things, um, you might want to consider maybe taking off a little more work than just a week or two. Now, for the pain, it really wasn't that bad. I was expecting a lot worse. Uh, I could tell you it kind of felt like a tightness, bloating, uh, kind of pulling sensation and I felt more of pain when I would twist um, kind, of, kind of like a crampy and it's kind of hard to explain but uh, you know I was able to manage it with some Tylenol and ibuprofen and it was really way better than I thought like I was up and about walking little bits because they encourage you to walk some um, you know walking around the house walking around the block within you know a few days after my surgery so now after the oophorectomy, I'm in surgical menopause, which means, you know, I'm, I don't have ovaries, so I'm no longer going to get periods. Um, and basically my body is thrown right into menopause, which should have been happening like, I don't know, 10 or 15 years later. Depending on your case and your doctor, you might be able to take some hormones to kind of help ease you into that. Uh, a lot of times for breast cancer survivors, they are not allowed to take hormones. But since my breast cancer was triple negative, meaning it didn't feed off of any of those uh, hormones, my doctors felt comfortable giving me a little bit of hormones to kind of help ease me into this surgical menopause. So I am actually taking birth control pills right now. And so far, I really haven't felt that many side effects, like maybe a few little hot flashes. Um, I don't know, it's hard to tell, I guess we'll see. So it's only been four weeks, but I will keep you guys updated and kind of see how I'm feeling in the next few weeks. So if you have any questions about BRCA, um, getting your ovaries out, that type of thing, feel free to contact me. And even if I don't know the answers, I can try to direct you to the people that do or the websites where you might be able to find more information. You know, just feel free to email or leave a comment and uh, keep me posted, keep me updated. I'd like to hear from you, let you know you're not alone. There's so many of us out there that are dealing with this BRCA gene mutation. There's so many different ways to uh, manage it. Uh, you don't have to have surgery. There's surveillance, so we can talk about that, but this is what I personally chose to do. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I will talk to you later.